negligent stage. And this low ball offer really indicates that perhaps there's something in the outlook of Billabong that the market's not aware of that indicates that Billabong is worth less. Now, there's been no change to the forecast of EBITDA between 74 to $85 million, but perhaps after that, all the turnaround plans just aren't sufficient enough. So really watching that 10-day period, D-Day will be the 23rd of August, but this low ball bid really putting into question the forecast and the outlook for Billabong, given that we've seen both uh, the bidders on the table really substantially reducing their bids from $1.10 down to $0.60 cents and around about $0.50. Cents. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have a look at Billabong, of course, if we don't see a bid come through after that 10 days, there is that um, the high probability of that capital raising. And they'll probably need to raise around about $100 million there. But no doubt the market reacting not only to that low ball bid, but also what it indicates, and that is that the outlook of Billabong not as rosy as perhaps what the market was expecting. They have kept their full year EBITDA forecast unchanged, but of course that accounting firm is going to be absolutely crucial to this bid. Julia, where did it go wrong for Billabong? You know, it was considered a massive success story. Was it the a lot of people point to the decision to to change from just a brand into an actual a retailer, a manufacturer and so forth, and and also maybe a bit too aggressive in terms of acquisitions. I mean what do you think's happened? I guess if we have a look at Billabong, it has been a very difficult five years. And if we have a look at the environment that these retailers have gone from, well, it's been a very difficult environment to be a highly leveraged retailer in this type of market. We have seen both structural changes and we've seen changes in Billabong's target market as well. It's gone from being the kids and the teenagers buying the surfwear to perhaps the parents of these teenagers. And unfortunately, we've seen a market share decreasing in this area. But it hasn't been just Billabong that's been affected. Recently, we've seen Rip Curl. They were looking to sell their business around the $300 million mark. They also pulled that sale from the market because of market conditions. So it is a very difficult market still to sell assets into. And it, of course, is very difficult if your balance sheet is not looking healthy. Mm. Um, and it looks like Billabong may need to go back to the market for cash unless we see a bid come through. On, on QBEs, as, uh, as Brooke made mention, I mean, that's some pretty strong language that we're hearing from, from Coppelson saying, you know, if you need to get some cash, this is your number one sell, of course, referring to, to QBE. I think the last couple of sessions we've seen brokers becoming more and more bearish on QBE so a number of sales out on QBE insurance as uh, uh, as of the last couple of sessions so unfortunately it doesn't look like it's going to be a healthy one for QBE insurance today we know that it is a company that has been struggling it's been struggling in terms of the investment portfolio and also in terms of the share price investors have just been disappointed over the last 18 months so unfortunately it does look like that trend set to continue but overall it does look like it's going to be a difficult day on the market despite commodity prices rising it does look like we may see a bit of profit taking coming in on the Aussie share market it does look like the financials the consumer staples as well as the telecom sectors may come under pressure so despite the record run that we saw on Wall Street overnight we actually may see the Australian market in the red today the material sector expected to outperform but elsewhere the market not looking so rosy why is today a day to take profits Julia what's I mean what's what's the catalyst there. We saw such a strong performance yesterday, so it does look like a bit more cautiousness creeping in in terms of the market. Uh, if we have a look at the commodity space, so that, that is a space that has been sold off quite heavily. So we are expecting to see some strong support coming through from BHP, Billet and Rio Tinto, as well as Fortescue. But if we have a look at some of those high yielding areas, there has been an expectation that the free money that we're seeing coming out of Japan is going to translate into returns uh, for Australian stocks, especially those high yielding areas. But the volumes really haven't reflected that as of yet. If we have a look at the market map, we should have seen the Australian market open by now. You'll see where the performance is today. You can see that the green on screen is really in that material space and the rest of the market not looking so crash hot. Not a lot of green there on the screen today. So it does look like the Aussie market looking to struggle despite those very strong leads that we've seen. We are watching a few stocks on the market today. It looks like Pete, uh, there has been a lot of speculation that it could be looking to expand into that retail residential space. It's come out with an announcement that it will be looking at a takeover of CIC. Mm. Um, but altogether, it does look like a bit of weakness today on the market.